Hey, 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 Weaver Snappers, this is Tortimer the Great. Welcome back to another very exciting episode here on the Tortimer the Great Gaming Channel. Today, we are going to be continuing a, a long-awaited series. Um, over a year ago, we started this series, Tortimer's Top 10. And uh, I said even then it was going to be an intermittent series. I didn't uh, even then, though, know how intermittent it was going to be. Uh, it's been over a year since the last episode of the series, but uh, I was recently reminded by one of my longtime viewers and supporters, Mac, uh, that uh, this episode was, was probably overdue. And so uh, thank you, special thank you goes out to Mac for uh, reminding me and kind of getting me back into gear on this. Uh, this, this, this series, as I've set it up, is a lot of work, uh, and so it, it just it kind of never really had time to get into it, and suddenly it's been over a year. Um, but over a year ago, our first episode, we examined my top 10 favorite Kanto Pokemon. We did that in celebration of Pokemon Day, um, which was the 20-year anniversary of the Pokemon franchise last year on February 27th. Um, but uh, now, looking forward, we have a new series coming out in a couple of weeks, a Pokemon Crystal Wedlock, so I figured what better time to examine my top 10 favorite Johto Pokemon. On. And uh, this 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 is going to be another list that's kind of really near and dear to my heart, hitting that nostalgia button, because as a kid growing up, you know, we've got our Game Boys, our Game Boys colors, we're playing Pokemon Red and Blue, me and my brother and my little brother's got his Pokemon Yellow, and we're all playing Pokemon, we're loving Pokemon, the anime, the games, all of that, uh, trading cards, the little figurines, every, we, we, we were Pokemon crazy. And then suddenly, without warning or, or anticipation, 100 new Pokemon, Generation 2, we're going on greater, bigger adventures, things like that. Back in the day, it was, you know, earth-shattering. Like, we, we, it was just, you know, 100 new Pokemon was just crazy. And so we were super excited. I remember, you know, just, you know, suddenly we've got new Pokemon starting to show up in the anime or released new trading card, you know, it's... And so there's a lot of hype surrounding it. We were super excited in my household. And, and realistically, still to this day, uh, the Johto games, those those Gen 2 games, are some of my absolute favorites. And so um, I'm really excited today to bring you my top 10 favorite Johto Pokemon. Let's jump into it, shall we? Number 10. All right, guys. So for the number 10 slot on my Johto top 10 list, I cheated a little bit here, as I tend to do. And we have a three-way tie for our number 10 slot. Uh, Houndor, Sneasel, and Murkrow. Um, I definitely want to get these guys in my top 10 list. Um, and they all kind of fall into the same sort of category for me. They're awesome rare Pokemon that I didn't really get to use very much, but based on, you know, I'm a very design-oriented person, so based on their designs, I love them immediately. Um, I got to use Sneasel quite a bit. Actually, one of my Shinies that I found legitimately was a Shiny Sneasel uh, River, and uh, I still have her in my Pokebank as a Weavile now. She's very awesome. Unfortunately, we don't get to use Houndor very often. He's a very rare Pokemon in whatever games he's in. Uh, and honestly, I've used a Murkrow maybe once, but just design-wise, uh, and the fact that when these Pokemon first came now, they were kind of like the initial avatars of this brand new type that they added. We got the dark type in Gen 2, and so you get these very cool, now like, cool Pokemon in their Houndor and Sneasel and Murkrow, and I just, I loved all of them, and I still do to this day, so those guys fall in my top 10. Number 9. Alright guys, so in the number 9 slot, I've got Macargo, and Macargo is here for a couple of reasons. Macargo is, I love his design, uh, it, this, this sl magma slug thing, sna it's not a snail, it's a slug, a uh, slugma is a sl anyway, <laughs> um, it, it, I love its design, and I'm a, as I said, I'm a very design-oriented person, but I've also used it a number of times in, uh, well, mostly in Gen 3 actually, because in Gen 2, unfortunately, like with... Houndor and, and Murkrow and some of these other Pokemon that were introduced in Gen 2. We got all these awesome new Pokemon, but a lot of them weren't even available until you would cross over into the Kanto half of the game. And by that point, you've already beaten the Elite Four. Your team's already built. You're not looking to catch new Pokemon. So, uh, you know, like Macargo and Houndor, you can not you can only find over in Kanto. Uh, and so, honestly, I don't think I even used or saw a Slugma until Gen 3. Um, and you go through the Volcanic Pass there, and you can catch Slugmas, and I love this Pokemon. Macargo is always such a great addition to my team. I liked the new typing with the Fire Rock, and Fire Pokemon themselves are always kind of exciting because you only really seem to get, like, one or two new fire types besides the starter in any given generation. So they're very rare, uh, just in general, and it's always awesome to get your hands on a new fire type Pokemon. And uh, so, yeah, this little Magma Slug is definitely in my top ten favorite Johto Pokemon. Number eight. Alrighty, guys, in the number eight slot is going to be Azumarill. And Azumarill is uh, is a Pokemon that, over the years, I have grown to love more and more. Um, you know, I again, kind of like the other ones on the list, I don't know that I even really used a Meryl until I got into Gen 3, and you can get one in one of those very early routes. 
Um, but at the same time, uh, jumping even further into the future, Gen 6 is where I really began to get an appreciation for this Pokemon. Um, obviously, in the competitive scene, Azumarill always had its niche with the huge power ability, hidden ability and things like that. But when we get into Gen 6 and Azumarill and, and, and its whole line is given the fairy typing, suddenly you've got this dragon killer that's got great power behind it, good speed. It's a great Pokemon to have on your team. It, when I did my uh, Pokemon X blind run, we had Bluebell the Azumarill on my team, and I loved that Pokemon. It was it just gave me such a great appreciation for this Pokemon that originally was kind of just started out as kind of like a Pikachu clone, um, because like when when you know when you're my age and you you were you know deep into Pokemon when Gen 2 was originally released, you see this little Meryl, and originally its name was released as Pika Blue, so it's just this little Pikachu clone and all that, but it's become so much more, and I just love Azumarill, so it is definitely here on my top 10 favorite Johto Pokemon. Number seven. Speaking of new Pokemon being uh, released to us when we were, you know, kids, Togepi. Togepi is on this list, and some of you guys may be surprised by that, but honestly, for even just pure nostalgia's sake, Togepi had to be in here. I love Togepi's whole line, um, and, and honestly, just the way it was introduced to us, we were deep into the anime when we were kids, and so Togepi is really the first Gen 2 Pokemon we ever saw. And that was a huge thing, because as I said at the beginning, we didn't even know new Pokemon existed. We had our we had the 151 Pokemon. We didn't have any real anticipation at that time that there was going to be more than that. So you get Togepi showing up in the anime, uh, and then you get the little mystery egg in, in the game, which gives you your Togepi. And jump forward to the Gen 4 remakes of Pokemon Heart Gold and Soul Silver. Now this little mystery egg Togepi's got the extra sensory move, which actually makes it useful. Um, and I got so much use out of that Pokemon when I was playing through the games myself. And then when we were doing the Hexapolock, we had Sherlock who came out of that egg and all of that as well. Uh, so it was just an awesome thing to be able to use Togepi. And uh, yeah, I, I couldn't not put this Pokemon in my top 10. So there we go. Togepi at number 7. Number 6. Alright, for number six, we've got my final tie on the list, so I'm trying to be better. Last time we had quite a number of ties. We started out with a three-way tie, but this is the last tie on the list. Quagsire and Gligar. These are two ground-type Pokemon that were added uh, in Gen 2, and I just love both of these Pokemon. Quagsire, I got a lot of use of uh, when I ran through Gen 2. I either was using Totodile as my starter, or I was uh, picking up a Wooper and running Quagsire. The water ground typing, which gave it an immunity to electric, was totally unique at that time, uh, and so that was really awesome. Um, and Quagsire had some fun depictions in the anime, but none more fun than what Gligar had. I wasn't, like, Gligar was another one of those Pokemon that kind of didn't, sh you didn't get access to it until, like, you beat the final gym in Gen 2. So I didn't really use Gligar a lot in, in game, and, um, and it wasn't really until it got its evolution that I even really started paying attention to Gligar, but, um, you know, in the anime, you had Gligar Man, and he was great. I used a lot of Gligar in, in Pixelmon and things like that. Um, back when the Gen 6 uh, Little Cup meta was just coming out, I used a lot of Gligar on my team until he got banned. So I've really grown a, a great appreciation for Gligar, and Quagsire has always been a, a solid guy that I can rely on. So, yeah, for that reason, these two are in my top 10 favorite Johto Pokemon. Number 5. Alright guys, moving into the top 5, some of these Pokemon are not only my top favorite Johto Pokemon, but some of my favorite Pokemon of all time, uh, and that is starting here with Umbreon. Uh, Umbreon is by far my favorite Eeveelution. Um, it's just, I, I, I like a lot of the Eeveelutions, in fact I like all of the Eeveelutions, but I love Umbreon. Uh, Umbreon has always been, you know, it was the first dark Pokemon I probably ever had. Um, it was it was this cool, sleek looking Eeveelution. It's probably my favorite shiny to date. I love both standard and shiny Umbreon, but I love shiny Umbreon probably better than any other shiny in the game. Uh, and just, you know, the, the utility of this thing. So, I'm, uh, like I said, I'm a very design-oriented person, so a lot of times my, my initial favorites are based on how cool they look and how much I love their design. But getting into, like, doing some more competitive these last couple of years, and especially, like, in my Grey version series right now, I've got Luna my Umbreon on my team. People just can't get through her. She's such a tank. And it's just amazing to have a reliable Pokemon, especially doing Nuzlocking and things like that. Uh, Umbreon is an awesome Pokemon to have on your team, and it's definitely worthy of being in my top five favorite Johto Pokemon. Number four. So, number four is going to be my favorite starter coming out of the, uh, the Johto region, and that is going to be Totodile. Um, I love Totodile from first sight, um, and he was a very fun, energetic presence in the anime as well. Uh, maybe a little bit annoying, uh, but we were kids at the time, so we, we enjoyed it. Um, but 
Uh, Totodile, you know, just starting out. I love the little water crocodile. How can you not love that awesome Pokemon? I know a lot of people are gonna. I, I actually have a lot of love for, for all the Johto starters. In fact, those first couple of generations, one through three, I, I really like all of those. Um, Cyndaquil is probably my least favorite of the first three generations of starters, but um, but I like Chikorita real well. But Totodile is just I, you can't be beat. Even when I was a kid, um, my email address was Totodileisle at hotmail.com. Like that was my first email address ever. Uh, I liked alliteration when I was a kid, so, uh, but yeah, Totodile has always been one of my absolute favorites, uh, and he's definitely my favorite Johto starter, and he's definitely in my top five favorite Johto Pokemon. Number three. Number three is going to be Crobat, and Crobat is here because Crobat has, not only is Crobat an awesome Pokemon in and of itself, but Crobat goes a long way in in redeeming a line of Pokemon that a lot of people hold in a lot of disdain, and that's the Zubat line. Um, the Zubat line, you know, you go in through all your different caves in many, many regions, and all you get is Zubats all the time, and it just annoys the crap out of people. But, if you put a little love and care into it, you catch yourself a Zubat in one of those caves, you give it some love and attention, and suddenly, you don't have an annoying little bat that's kind of worthless, suddenly you have this awesome Crobat that is just, it, it, you know, it's, it's quick, it's powerful, and it's totally worth putting on your team. Crobat, especially with the, the advent of Gen 6 and getting the fairy typing, which Poison is now a more useful type, which is awesome, because Poison is one of my favorite types and has been very underappreciated throughout the years. But now that the fairy type is here, um, Pokemon like Crobat are getting the appreciation they deserve, and so Crobat is definitely my top three favorite Pokemon in the Johto region. Number two. My second favorite Pokemon in the Johto region is going to be Heracross. Uh, and Heracross is one of those Pokemon that, unlike some of the ones on this list where I've gained a greater appreciation for them over the years, I've always been a massive fan of Heracross. Um, ever since the very, very beginning, he's just got an awesome design. He's got a great unique typing at that time. Uh, it might still... No, we got Buswell now. But he's got, he had a great unique typing at the time. I really loved its depiction in the anime. And for me, being a design-related, you know, uh, design-oriented person, you know, the depictions in anime really went a long way to turn my, my opinion around on things because, you know, they really get life in those kinds of things. And so um, I really loved that as a kid. Um, his interactions with, like, Bulbasaur and the whole team and things like that. He was great. And at the same time, he's an amazing, strong Pokemon that is not just there to look pretty. He's kicking butt, taking names. He got a Mega Evolution in Gen 6, which has been fun to use on Showdown and things like that. Heracross is an awesome Pokemon. Uh, you guys probably are not surprised to see him on this list. We used Goliath in the Hexathalock, things like that. Uh, I've thrown a lot of love for Heracross out there over the years, and he is very, very strong sitting in his position here at number two. Honorable Mention. Alright, for my honorable mentions, you guys might be shaking your heads a little bit looking at the Pokemon I have assembled here, but some Flora, Blossom, Bayleaf, and Jumpluff all needed to be on this list in one capacity or another, um, and that's why they're here. These grass Pokemon are, are amazing. Um, Bayleaf is probably my favorite uh, segment of the Chikorita line. I love Bayleaf. Um, and then Pokemon like some Flora, which is, you know, it's pre-evolution and probably it are one, some of the worst Pokemon in the game. For whatever reason, I love them. I used it some Flora when I ran through the games originally on my original gold cartridges. Um, you know, Jumpluff is the same. I used Jumpluff. And, you know, especially like some Flora, there was a whole episode I remember in the anime dedicated to some Flora where, like, there was a some Flora beauty contest or something, and Meowth dressed up as some Flora. I mean, just, you know, giving life to these creatures in the anime was a big thing for me as a kid. And then just, I actually used one in the game, and, you know, going through the story mode, it, it worked fine for me. It was, this was before Nuzlocking and everything, but. Um, yeah, you know, some Flora Blossom. I love Blossom. It's a great, uh, you know, you get some, you know, it was one of those first instances where we were getting a branch off of an older Pokemon, kind of like Crobat. So you get these original Pokemon, and now suddenly there's something new attached to it. And so that really appealed to me back in those days as well. I love Blossom. I love some Flora. I love Bayleaf. I love Jumpluff. And they definitely deserve to be here on my honorable mentions. Number one. Alrighty guys, if you've been on my channel for any length of time, you're not at all surprised by this choice, but my number one favorite Pokemon in the Johto region is Apom. Apom is one of those Pokemon that, unlike Heracross, has very much had to grow on me over the years. When Apom was first released, I didn't think much of this little monkey at all. It was this derpy little crazy-faced looking monkey, and I wanted nothing to do with it. But over the years, especially since I've started doing YouTube and things like that these last four or so years, 
Um, I really become to love Apom so much to the point where Apom is almost on level there with me with Squirtle. Probably still just slightly under, but pretty much they're tied for my favorite Pokemon of all time. Um, and that's thanks very much to the anime. I finally got around to um, watching the the later generations of the anime. I probably as a kid only watched like uh, Kanto, uh, Johto, and Hoenn. I probably didn't branch into um, the Gen 4 anime at all. And that's really where Apom kind of started to shine because uh, uh, Ash had caught one. Uh, but then Apom wanted to do contests or something, so I think it ended up with Dawn and all that. But that happened to the Gen 4 anime, which I didn't watch as a kid. So it really gave some life to this Apom character that I'd never really seen there before. And then when I get into doing competitive battle and things like that, Klungar says, Hey, I want to battle you in Little Cup. I start doing Little Cup, didn't even know it existed before. Uh, and suddenly, you know, I start building teams. Apom, my my Apom boots, is now a staple on basically every Little Cup team I build. I, I just love Apom so much. Now it's derpy, creepy little face that used to just like put me off so much now I love it Apom is amazing even in my channel art you'll see an Apom sitting on my shoulders I'm playing Game Boy by the campfire there like Apom is one of those awesome Pokemon it's, it's amazing in Little Cump um, Ambipom its evolution is not quite as competitively viable but um, both Pokemon have great little niches that I, I honestly like I had I did a Little Cup competition recently where I it was a draft league and I wasn't able to pick up Apom and I felt it I could not get my groove going without Apom there to, to help me along. So Apom is my absolute favorite Pokemon in the Johto region, no questions at all. Uh, for a long time it was Totodile, but as my, my tastes have refined a little bit, um, Apom is definitely my number one here. So uh, thank you guys so much for watching. I've been Torma the Great and you guys have been great. Um, I would expect, now that we're jumping into the Hiptathlock series here, which is going to be starting in a couple of days now, we're going to be jumping into Season 2 of the Hiptathlock, going into the Johto region ourselves, and going through a Pokemon Crystal Wedlock. Um, but as we're going through this Heptathlock now, you should be expecting these, these top 10s coming out more frequently. I'm going to try and get one out, you know, just ahead each season of that region's Heptathlock. So, um, but keep an eye out for that. Let me know in the comments down below, what are your favorite Pokemon from the Johto region? If you want to give me a top 10, if you want to tell me your, just, just your absolute favorite, whatever you guys want to do, I would love to get a discourse going with you guys, um, on what your favorite Pokemon are. And speaking of discourse... You can join my Discord server in the comments down below, or not in the comments, but in the description down below. Uh, you can check out my Discord server and uh, and join in in the discussions there. Me and my uh, subs have a lot of time talking Pokemon and a lot of other games in the Discord there, um, so make sure to check that out. Uh, but for me, guys, I've been Torment the Great, and you guys have been great. Make sure those likes, comments, subscriptions for me, guys, and I will see you all back here next time. Have a good one.